Good morning, everyone. Welcome to <coughs> BC308, our course on Revelation and Daniel. Uh, this morning, I'm sitting in the church office, and uh, it's good to connect with everyone online. Let's uh, take a moment to pray, and then, sorry, and then we'll get started. Um, could somebody please pray with us, and then we will start. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your your grace, your mercies in our lives. Thank you, Father, for giving us another opportunity to be here with uh, our fellow classmates, here with Pastor Ashish, Father, Lord, to learn on uh, such important books in the Bible, Father, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Thank you, Father, for all the uh, uh revelation that we are learning about that that's being uh revealed that's been exposed father to us um uh, that's being ex explained to us father we pray father that uh, we uh, prepare ourselves as well as um to receive your word as well as uh, lord equip um uh, uh, us lord that we may be able to share uh, your good news your um uh, message, Lord, to people around us, Father. Bless Pastor Ashish, bless every classmate, Father, Lord. I pray, Father, for uh, your uh, presence and your grace to overflow in each of our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Well, thank you. All right, so today uh, we're going to start with Chapter 17, Revelation chapter 17 uh, we came to the end of revelation chapter 16 last week and uh, it brought us to the end of the seven bowls of judgment so literally we've we've gone we you know when we come to the end of chapter 16 we've gone through three sets of uh, seven judgments each. We've gone through the seals, seven seal judgments, seven trumpet, and seven bowls. So we've come to the end of it. All of God's wrath has been poured out on the earth. So now what we see, the next three chapters, 17, 18, 19, is the whole buildup to the battle of Armageddon. We already saw in chapter 16, uh, in the sixth bowl, that the river Euphrates was dried up and there were demonic powers that released to go and instigate, to go and mobilize in some sense the armies of the earth, the kings of the earth, to come against Jerusalem, come against Israel. So that has already started. That is in the sixth bowl. That means armies are already beginning to mobilize towards the battle of Armageddon. Two major things happen before the battle, uh, two major things on earth happen before the battle of Armageddon, one major thing happens in heaven, which we will see. In chapter 17, uh, chapter 17 and 18, we read about Babylon. But the Babylon referred to in chapter 17 is different from the Babylon referred to in chapter 18, although the word is the same, Babylon. In chapter 17, we read about the great harlot or mystery Babylon. In chapter 18, we read about the great city Babylon. So two different things. Although it's the same term, Babylon is used uh, two different. It's used in two different ways. The great harlots mystery Babylon, as we will see in chapter 17, refers to the false religion 
or the false religious system that was promoted by the Antichrist and the false prophet. Mainly the false prophet was promoting that religion, getting people to worship the Antichrist. And, uh, and, 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 and I will share reasons why we can conclude that after we read chapter 17. I'm just uh, giving a little introduction. But in chapter 17, this mystery Babylon, we will see to the end of chapter 17, this mystery Babylon collapses or you know, you know, it's destroyed or it's, you know, it's, it's torn apart. Chapter 18, where we read about the great city Babylon, refers to the economic system. Why do we, we will look at it when we read eight, chapter 18, because we see that the description in chapter 18 has to do with selling and trading, global trading. So that's why we say, based on the context of chapter 18, the great city Babylon refers to that economic system, which we had read about in chapter 13, where the Antichrist had put in a system where you cannot buy or sell unless you have the number or the mark of the beast, that of the Antichrist. But that whole system collapses. And we will read in chapter 18 that in one hour, in one hour, 60 minutes, the wealth of people all around the world just goes up, just disappears, goes up in smoke. The wealth is gone. And that is what is going to happen. So basically, God has already executed judgment on the nations, but now the religious system collapses, economic system collapses. The two things that the Antichrist and the false prophet put in to control the people both collapse. So remember, we read in chapter 14, the angel was saying, was announcing, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen. One of the angels. That's what happens in chapter 17 and 18. The word Babylon uh, comes from the Old Testament, where in um, uh, Genesis 9, I think, um, the, for the very first time, people came together. They wanted to build a tower to reach God. And others, okay, we will build a tower. Will to reach God, and there God, you know, confused them with languages and dispel, disperse them. So you have the term Babel or Babylon. Babel, meaning Babel gate, El God is a gateway to God or a man's attempt to reach God. And Babylon, man's attempt to try to reach God or you know, get into the place of God through religion or money, wealth, is both destroyed. Okay, so with that little introduction, uh, let us read chapter 17, and uh, we'll read the whole chapter. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a short chapter, so Revelation chapter 17. Uh, we can, uh, somebody can read verses 1 through 6, and then somebody else can read seven through 18, please. One through six, somebody can read that. Uh, Revelation chapter 17. One through six, yeah. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 to 6. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I'll show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried away carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet piece, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. 
the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication and on her forehead a name was written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth i saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i marveled with grace uh, amazement mm. thank you somebody could read verse 7 to 15 uh, 18 please But the angel said to me, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is a mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the, mount, uh, the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was, and is not, is himself also the eighth, and is of the seven, and is going to perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Uh, do I continue, Pastor? Yeah. Yes, please. Till the end, yeah. Okay. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Amen. Mm. Yeah. All right. So. How do we understand this? And uh, let's just look at it together. So um, John is seeing a great harlot, an adulteress, adulteress. So in the Bible, harlotry, adultery, uh, uh, of course, we understand the natural side of it, but the spiritual departing from God. So even in the Old Testament, you'll read a lot of this, especially in the, in the prophets when they were speaking and rebuking God's people. They said, you've committed harlotry, you've committed adultery. Even in the New Testament, James 4 and verse 4, James says, you know, he's speaking to believers, uh, believers you adulterers and adulteresses. Don't you know friendship with the world is enmity with God? So harlotry or adultery, spiritual harlotry, uh, spiritual departing from God, going away from God, is also in the Bible uh, used, uh, referred to, uh, is referred to as harlotry or adultery. So John is saying the great harlot. I'm going to just mute this thing, Tefina's mic. Okay. All right. Um, so John is saying this great harlot, this, this woman was a great harlot. And in verse 1, she's sitting on many waters. What is the waters? Verse 15, the interpretation is there in uh, Revelation 17, 15. The waters that you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So this harlot is this 
spiritual adultery, this religious system that has caused people to depart from the living God, to, be, to go away from God. And it is covering, it's blanketing the whole earth, peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So the harlot is sitting upon the waters. Waters are representing the people. Harlot is harlot or harlotry is this departure from God, this false religion. Right? And verse 2 it says, even the kings of the earth have committed fornication. That means even great influential people have subscribed to this religious system, this religion that was being promoted by the false prophet. Right? And we also see. Uh, other reasons why we can say this harlot is a false religion. It's a it's a religious system that takes people away from God. Other reasons why. Verse 3, it's that it has full uh, names full of blasphemy. Blasphemy against whom? Against God. So that means this is something that is against God. Again, uh, another indication that this is a religious system that is taking people away from God. Right? And this woman is arrayed in purple and scarlet gold, precious. I mean, it, the wealth of the nations have been poured into it. So you can imagine, kings, leaders, influence, everybody has subscribed to it, and they have actually poured their wealth, you know, like you know, given all of the money and all of that into this religious system. Right? And again, another reason why we say it's a religious system was five. Her name is Mystery Babylon. The word mystery is used where, uh, even in the New Testament. The gospel was a mystery, but it's now unveiled. So mystery is something that's hidden, but it's now, in, in the case of the gospel, it's been unveiled. It's a spiritual thing. It's a revelation. In this case, the word mystery is being used for this, this great harlot. So again, indicating something spiritual, right? That is, it is actually a mystery that's actually blinding the minds of people in this case. Another reason why we say this is as a religious system is in verse six. It is this woman, this harlot has resulted in the martyrs and the killing of many people, the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. So this is a system that is going against believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why we are saying, when you look at all these things, hey, all of these are pointers and telling us that very clearly, this mystery Babylon, this great harlot, is a religious system that has enveloped the world. Rich people, everybody has subscribed to it. They put the money in there. Uh, it's a mystery. It's blinding the minds of people. And it's a system that is attacking or has attacked the saints, the believers, gone after them, killed many, many saints. But what we also see is, uh, and this is from uh, verses 7 to 14, that this system was propped up by the Antichrist. Right. So this beast he talks about, you know, seven heads, ten horns. We see, we read about that beast in chapter 13. Very similar to what Dan, we write about in Daniel, about the beast that came, right? So this beast, upon whom this harlot is riding, that means this Antichrist, is actually propping up this whole religious system, this beast. And he, uh, the Antichrist, he has depicted with seven heads, ten horns, the ten leaders. You know, so we are, we are kind of bringing in all the understanding from Daniel and Revelation 13, the ten leaders who have supported this Antichrist. They, they've, they've propped him up. And he has now carried, supported this religion, religious system. The, the uh, uh, verse 9, he says, here is the mind which has wisdom. So the angel or the angel is speaking to John and saying, okay, I want you to understand how how and when this religious system is coming into place. Here is the mind which has wisdom, verse 9. Right? He says there are seven mountains. Okay, what are mountains? We read in Daniel 2, mountains are representing kingdoms, empires. So there are seven empires. 
and he says five of these have come and gone one is so what are the five we look we saw them earlier uh, and then we go back uh, um, the uh, um, uh, we've started with Babylonians Medes Persians uh, sorry the Assyrians Babylonians Medes Persians Greek five empires one is what was the empire that was there during John's time the Romans right so John was there in the sixth in the sixth one at the time the angel was speaking seventh one the other has not yet come what is the seventh one that's the kingdom of the beast who is to come that is the antichrist so it's referring to this kingdom this one world ruler that's the seventh the you know the empire the one world influence like a mountain of the antichrist he is there he's going to go on for a short time and this beast that was is not is himself the eighth so this antichrist was in a sense he is he was not and is himself so that means he was killed he was brought back to life so we read about that in chapter 13 when we said that he received a mortal wound of uh, the we said it it could be a real assassination attempt he received a mortal wound chapter 13 but he came back and then the whole world marveled so he's referencing that here the beast that was is not is himself is the eighth right so he used to come and he's going to perdition of course that's the antichrist we know what will happen he's going to go off into uh eternal in the lake of fire so what's what's he saying he's saying that this woman is sitting on the seven mountains really these world empires these empires that existed in that region right we, we said the Syrians Babylonians Medes Persians Greek sixth one was when John was there the Roman so around that empire around that region the seven empire is there basically where the former Roman Empire was this woman is sitting she's being propped up there it's like that's the headquarters of, of this great harlot she's being propped up there and this Antichrist he's when he comes the seventh and the eighth is this referring to the same person because he would be killed and then he would come back seventh and eighth he is the one who during his time we're going to see this great mystery Babylon coming so it says understand mind of wisdom understand when this is going to happen so it's not something that's going to happen now it's going to happen during the 78th that means when the Antichrist is there that's the time this great harlot is going to come into prominence it's going to sit upon the waters it's going to have influence so you know many times people look at you know they point to this religion they point to this that religion say oh is that the mystery babylon no 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 have the mind of wisdom it's going to happen during the seventh and the eighth that means when this peace comes the antichrist comes that's when this mystery babylon is going to emerge and dominate the world but what is going to happen is that verse this is verses 12 to uh, uh, on that these ten horns were the ten kings who received they received no who received no kingdom he said but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast these are one mind they will give power to the beast they will make war with the lamb the lamb will overcome them uh, and for his lord or lords and king of kings so they are so these ten leaders who have been supporting the beast they are eventually going to be confronted by Jesus Christ when he comes at chapter 19 but then he says this what could happen was 16 the ten horns which you saw 
these will hate the harlot and make her desolate naked eat of flesh a burner with fire for god has put into their hearts to fulfill his purpose to be a one mind to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of god are fulfilled and the woman you saw in that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth so these ten horns will hate the harlot and make her desolate so what's going to happen just ten leaders who have supported the antichrist and the antichrist has supported the beast uh, the antichrist supported the false prophet god allowed that whole thing to happen for a period of time so that the antichrist came into power and the false prophet came into power this world religious system enveloped the people god allowed that but at this time, verse 16, they will hate the harlot and make her desolate and naked. That means these, these people themselves will rip apart, in so to speak, this mystery Babylon. They will they themselves will dismantle it, they themselves will tear it down. So this mystery Babylon in chapter 17. We're getting an idea what this mystery Babylon is, a religious system that was carried out by the false prophet, how it came into power, and how it is going to be torn down. That the ten horns, they will tear it down. The ten leaders, they themselves will tear down this mystery Babylon, fulfilling what the angel had said. That is, Babylon has fallen. Babylon has fallen. So that is one part of Babylon falling. Okay. Are you all with me so far? Did you get it? Any questions? Tiffany's question. Uh, from uh, Revelation 70, there are no longer any people who believe in Jesus on the earth. No, there will be some. There will be people. Right. So this this mystery Babylon has great influence on the earth, but there will be people who still believe in Jesus who will who will be alive when Jesus comes and they will move into the uh millennium, into the uh thousand year reign of Jesus. So there will be some people. But what chapter 17 is saying is that this great harlot has so much influence over the whole earth. But it doesn't mean that everybody becomes uh, subscribes to it. There will be a lot of people who refuse to do it and they will die. And there'll be people who re refuse to subscribe to it, but they will be alive, but there'll be few. Okay. We'll see this in chapter 20. Okay. So now we come to chapter 18, which is a second part of this great Babylon. Remember the angel was announcing, Babylon is fallen, Babylon is fallen. So first, this mystery Babylon, it's almost like an internal struggle. The 10 leaders, they themselves make it desolate. They make it naked, they tear it down. So something has happened internally that they tore down this mystery Babylon. Chapter 18, is the other part of this great Babylon. But the language is different, like I mentioned. It's talking about the great city, Babylon. The great city has fallen. Right? So as we read, I want you to pay attention to how this great city, Babylon, is being described. And you will see clearly it's different from mystery, Babylon. This great city Babylon, you will see clearly that it has to do with trading, it has to do with money, it has to do with the a global financial system because it, it's affecting people globally who are trading in it. But, sorry, you will also see that even this great city Babylon attacked the believers. So both mystery Babylon and the great city Babylon, one of the things both these things did was attack the believers. Um, so this, this fulfills, I mean, this kind of is like a fulfillment of Revelation 13, where we saw 
that if nobody bought and sold, I mean, nobody received the mark of the beast, they couldn't buy and sell, but they were also killed. If nobody worshipped the image of the beast, they were killed. Right? So but if you don't subscribe to the religious system, you'll be killed. If you don't subscribe to the economic system, you'll be killed. So that we see that happening here as well. So let's read chapter 18. I will read it in little portions. Uh, could somebody read for us, please, verses 1 to 8 of Revelation 18. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon, the grave is fallen, is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every false spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double of her. In the measure that she glorified herself, and lived it luxuriously, in the same measure, give her torment and sorrow for she says in her heart i sit as queen and i am no widow and will not see sorrow therefore her plagues will come in one day death and mourning and famine and she will be utterly burned with fire the strong is the lord god who judges her mm, thank you verses 9 to 20 please somebody could read that section The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object most precious wood, bronze, iron and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots and bodies and souls of men the fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you and all the things which are rich and splendid had gone from you and you shall find them no more at all the merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas that great city that was clothed in fine linen purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who travel by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke, smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth, for in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Mm -hmm. Last section, verses 21 to 24, please. Somebody could read that. Verses 21 to 24. 
Then the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. The sound of harpists, musicians, flourish, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you any more. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you any more. And the sound of millstone shall not be heard in you any more. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery all the nations were deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints, and of all who were slain on the earth. Mm. Thank you. So, you look at chap this whole chapter. It's, it's referring to this thing called the great city Babylon. And Babylon is fallen, is fallen. This Babylon, uh, how, what was it? It was a place where the merchants of the earth became rich. So immediately you say, hey, this has to do with money. It has to do with an economic system. They became rich through this. The kings of the earth, they just, and, and this, this city deceived people. The Bible talks about the deceitfulness of riches. So that, that's in line with what riches do. It deceives people. And this great city Babylon uh, uh, was, you know, was something that merchants of the earth, they all participated, they became rich through this whole thing. And it also was a place that was inhabited by demons, it says. That means demonic powers were actually operating through the system. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, every time we buy and sell or we engage finance, with financial transactions, we're dealing with demons. No, no, no. We're talking about this economic system, this particular system, right? That this system, which was set up, Revelation 13, by the Antichrist, which he was controlling, he said, no one, no one on earth could buy or sell. I mean, people on earth couldn't, could not buy or sell until, unless they subscribe to this system. So we can, by looking at it and, and, and reading its contents, we can clearly say, this is a referring to an economic system where people from all over the world were participating in it. They were becoming rich, luxurious, making money, and they thought nothing would happen. Uh, and then suddenly, it says, and it, it's mentioned twice, verse 17 and verse 19, it's mentioned twice, in one hour, your wealth is gone. In one hour, little one hour, all this wealth is just dissipated. You know, and when you think about uh, the world's economic system, uh, there have been occasions when suddenly the markets fell, the stock market, something happened. The, you know, they say, they say the markets crashed. And literally billions of dollars uh, you know, just, just wiped away, just disappeared. Somebody who was who had so many billions of dollars, suddenly they say, oh, they're down, they're less by so much. It just disappears, right? The economic conditions have changed, and so the valuation of the wealth just changes. It's like in an instant, it's gone, disappears. And so just knowing that, knowing how the economic system works today, you say, hey, Revelation 18 is like very, very possible that suddenly, just goes, you know, everything just disappears. And uh, people are all over the world are so dismayed. They say, like, uh, alas, alas, our wealth is gone. But this, verse 20 says, this is God avenging his apostles and prophets. Because this system, as we saw in verse 24, it was used, this system also resulted in the death of God's people, because it says in her the blood of the prophets and the saints was found. That means this economic system had such an impact that it, it resulted in, in the dying of believers. And now God has avenged. In one hour, he's brought it down. So Revelation 17 and 18, this is the, like the last two big judgments on the earth. This is after the, you know, after this, the, the, the seals and the trumpets and the bowls have all happened. All that is finished. 
last two things God does. He brings down the religious system that was put in place. He brings down the economic system that was put in place. Basically, people have nothing to trust in. They can't trust in their religious belief systems. They can't trust in their money. It's gone. One, one hour, it's gone. And then something amazing happens in heaven. Revelation 19. In heaven, there is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, you know, we just have to imagine this. You know, we don't know <laughs> what it's going to look like. Because imagine a table set for millions of people. So this is not 100 people or not a wedding of 100 people or 1,000 people. But this is a wedding of the ages. It's the marriage of the Lamb. So, you know, John describes it here in Revelation 19. But again, we have to just try to imagine how great, how grand, and how, how it's going to happen. And literally millions of people are going to sit at this table with Jesus. And remember Jesus said, you know, when he told his disciples, you know, when he, when he had the Last Supper, he said, you know, I will not eat of this until I have it with you in the kingdom. Right? And I think most likely he was referring to this particular moment when there would be this great supper of the Lamb. Right? So we will just read that portion, Revelation 19. Try to imagine it. Uh, I don't know, you know how exactly, how grand, and how God is going to make it happen. But there is going to be this great marriage celebration. Where the groom, the bridegroom, the Lord Jesus is un united with all the saints. For there. Okay. Revelation 19. Let's please read verses 1 to 10. Revelation 19, 1 to 10. Somebody could read that for us, please. Revelation 19 verses 1 to 10. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God, who true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again, they said, Alleluia, her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters and the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and one of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm. So what do we see? We see there's this great rejoicing in heaven that uh, Babylon has fallen, Mystery Babylon and the Great City Babylon. And in both cases, we see that it's an act of God avenging the death of his saints. That means he's saying, you know, both these uh, were responsible for the death of so many of his people. 
God has taken judge, taken judgment on them, executed judgment on them. And then we see something most amazing. It says, now the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. That's verse 7. It's like, it's as though the Lamb, the marriage of the Lamb, that Lord Jesus. It's like he's been waiting for this, waiting for the bride, his wife, to make herself ready. And so this is a great moment when his wife has made herself ready. And uh, who's the wife? Verse 8. Verse eight. It's the people. They are clothed in the righteousness of God. And it was the righteous acts of the saints, or the righteousness in which they walked, and they clothed in righteousness. And he says, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So, you know, just literally, like, two verses, but verses 7, 8, and 9, or three verses, just three verses, but it is that moment that the Lord Jesus is going to sit in this marriage supper with the saints. Just three verses. But it's that historic, I mean, you know, it's that great, I wanted to say historic, but it's that great moment out in the future when the Lord will be sitting at the table with the saints. Again, it's, you know, it's something, uh, I don't know how it's going to happen. It's just we have to imagine it. And what exactly is going to be there for supper? All of those things we don't know. It just says it's a mom. It's like this is the wedding celebration, the marriage celebration. Jesus is being, you know, united with the saints. Of course, we know that we are in him already. He is the head. We are the body. And we, we know all of what Ephesians 5 says, but these three verses are talking about that moment when there's going to be great celebration in heaven for all the redeemed saints in the presence of the Lord at that moment. There's a celebration happening. So John is overwhelmed. He falls down at the feet of this person who's been talking to him at that time. And then he says, you know, don't worship me. Worship God. I'm just one of your brethren. Uh, so meaning he's probably one of the Jewish elders there in heaven. So let's worship God. And right after, so on earth, these two things happen, the fall of the mystery Babylon, the great city Babylon. In heaven, there's the marriage supper of the Lamb. Once the marriage supper of the Lamb is over, then comes the Lord is coming with his saints to the battle of Armageddon. All the leaders of the earth, the armies of the earth, the Antichrist, the false, you know, uh, false prophet, the the um, uh, you know the ten leaders who propped up the Antichrist and other all these kings they're all coming coming together to this great day. What has motivated them? The one thing is they've come to divide up the land. They've come against Israel. They've come against Jerusalem. So they mobilized against Israel and Jerusalem to divide up the land. Right. And you can think about what's happening now. You know, the latest thing is like Australia is going to vote to for Palestine to have Palestine to have their own land, their own place to have their own independent state. It means be recognized as a nation. You know, so the different nations are beginning to take their position. You don't know exactly where, how far this is all going to go, but by the time we we come to the fulfillment of Bible prophecy here, the nations of the earth are being mobilized to go against Israel and Jerusalem to divide up the land. They're moving in, and at that time, the Lord himself is going to come. That's Revelation 19. We'll uh, take a break, and we'll then come back and read from verse 11 onwards. That's the Battle of Armageddon, Revelation 19, 11 on. We will 
read that after we come back from break. Right, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you.